Private 5G still has two characteristics that are slowing its adoption as a replacement for Wi-Fi. It's very complicated and it usually requires licensed wireless spectrum. But in a glass half full sense, these drawbacks actually present carriers and service providers with a significant opportunity to expand their business models beyond bandwidth by offering companies value-added services that can offload the intricacy of 5G and address those onerous licensing responsibilities. Not everyone wants to undertake this sort of work. Well, I'm out of here. AWS recently exited the private 5G market because it was harder than it thought it would be. Recall that Google made the same mistake with its fiber business. But then again, hyperscalers aren't really in the business of building a digital infrastructure that revolutionizes the world and unfetters the economies of the global south. They're more in the business of identifying the shortest path to the largest pile of money and then not paying any tax on it. <laughs> Growing a ubiquitous 5G global biome will take decades, which is the job if you're a company like Ericsson or Nokia that has been around for a century or has a hundred year plan like Huawei. These companies have no issue with the mission's longevity. And again, this is also a potentially game-changing opportunity for carriers to reinvent themselves beyond their role as data utilities in the 21st century, bringing their understanding of wireless technology to bear in a territory where hyperscalers like AWS and Google fear to tread. Join me next time as I wrap up this series by looking at how the history of our industry portends a future in which 5G dominates.